Hello and welcome to your Sunday night edition of Jayhawk Sports Talk. Taylor Williamson joined by David Elliott here. And David, hard to believe, but another KU men's basketball season is in the books. Jayhawks faced off against the Texas Longhorns last night. Let's go straight to the highlights. This was a good one for KU. Bill Self prepping his team before their final game. Texas out to an early 2-0 lead. And a weird thing, T-Rob posterized by Clinton Chapman. Texas up 4-0, wouldn't last long. T-Rob would get his revenge. Tyshawn Taylor going in there, puts it up, misses, but T-Rob there with the putback slam dunk. Texas up seven at the break. We pick it up in the second half. The man who kept Texas in this game, Jacobin Brown, a tough jumper by him. He had 33, Texas only down nine there, and Texas just down seven, but T-Rob able to make it inside. A nifty little spin move, he's hacked, puts Kansas back up by nine and then in his final game Tyshawn Taylor able to beat the pressure here goes coast to coast for the layup he had 22 Kansas up by 15 they'd end up winning by 10 a final score of 73 to 63 Thomas Robinson had himself a whale of a game maybe his last game here he had 25 points 14 rebounds, 2 assists, and Tyshawn Taylor in what is definitely his last game here, senior night, 22 points, 4 assists, and 3 steals. Kansas finishes the season 26-5, and 16-2, and, and gets that vaunted number one seed in the Big 12 tournament, which is coming up this week. David, what were some of your reactions from this game? Initial reactions were it was a kind of a hard game to initially start out with. You know, you mentioned Clint Chapman. There were some other guys hitting shots on early in the going for the Longhorns. Jayhawks able to pull ahead, though, led by Thomas Robinson. Again, what can you say about the kid? Another double-double, 25 and 14 on the night. Tyshawn gets 22. Those are the only two Jayhawks in double figure, in 20-plus uh, scoring, double-figure scoring. Jeff Withy just misses it with nine points. Good overall effort from the Jayhawks. And me as a senior, you as a senior, it's going to be tough. But uh, our last Allen Fieldhouse experience, it was definitely a good one. And yes, it was senior night. Only three seniors on this KU team. Tyshawn Taylor, sixth man Connor Tehan, and the little used Jordan Juneman, who's uh, really a fan favorite. But Bill Self talked about it being senior night after the game. It was nice. It was nice to hear those guys uh, speak. And you know, they've all contributed in their own way immensely to the success that we've had. And so that, that, was, that, was, that was nice. Fans, so cool that they stuck around. And we talk about, David, how it was senior night for those three players. But there's another player on the team who everyone's expecting, and he rightfully so should go to the lottery. Thomas Robinson, sure to be, it's looking like a top 10 pick. Bill Self gave him a little acknowledgement. Didn't let him speak, but let the crowd, you know, give, give some huzzahs to him. And he talked about that after the game, too. I don't think you make exceptions on senior night to do that. Uh, but I do think he's definitely worthy of being recognized. And if he wants to talk, like I said, he can come back next year. And people would like that if T-Rob maybe came yeah. back for another year. He's not going to. The guy's been through so much and he's given his heart and soul to this Jayhawks team. So it was good that Bill Self let him get a little bit of acknowledgement at the end of the game there. But David, what else did you see from this team last night? You know, something that Self did mention about Thomas Robinson last night was how, yeah, you know, he would like to see him come back for that last year, his senior season, and he would get a chance to speak, of course, being a senior on next year's senior night. But me personally, I think it would be stupid of Thomas Robinson to stay. Um, he's got all the intangibles to go to the next level, to play in the NBA, um, a great talent, and especially with all that he's been through financially, I think it would be a great boost if he were to make that decision to go to the NBA. But yeah, for, for the rest of the team, Again, a good effort, but something that Self touched on, I don't believe we have sound on this, but something he touched on in the press conference was he was really, really disappointed with how they defended in the second half, especially against uh, Jacobin Brown, the leading scorer. Scored 33, I believe, on the night for, Tex for the Texas Longhorns. An unbelievable player. First team Big 12 uh, selection is, was, just, was just announced today is Brown. But the Jayhawks, if they're going to do anything in the tournaments coming up, need to get better on the defensive end, need to guard better and play better, uh, play a lot smarter basketball. And you know, David, I feel like it wasn't a matter of them not being able to guard Jacob and Brown. I mean, they were playing tight defense on the guy, but he was just making some unbelievable shots that you don't often see guys make. And the Jay, I mean, the Jayhawks can't let 
guys have one big game like that against a team like Texas where Jacobin Brown is seemingly their only contributor. He had almost half their points. You know, they, they can do that. But in the NCAA tournament, they aren't going to be able to let one guy go off for so many points. But you got to be satisfied, David, with the way that the Jayhawks won this game. Jayhawks had lost only one game at home in Tyshawn Taylor's entire career here, and that was last year to the University of Texas after the passing of Thomas Robinson's mother. So this game must have been, and I, I, could, I feel it as being kind of cathartic for oh, the Kansas Jayhawks, and it's good to see them get that W. Jayhawks played in another game earlier this week. They took on Oklahoma State. Jayhawks were able to comfortably win that one by 12 in Stillwater, a game place where teams often have trouble winning. They were able to clinch that outright Big 12 title. Tyshawn Taylor had 27 points. Thomas Robinson, 17 points. Both of them had tremendous games, David, and we won't go too deep into that game since it was a couple days ago, but it's worth noting that they were able to clinch that Big 12 title. And now it's on to the Big 12 tournament, and then more importantly, on to the NCAA tournament. And Bill Self spoke about what he thought his team's tournament chances were. Lightning in a bottle and gets hot, and, and I do think we have the pieces in place that we could do that. But we've got to play smarter and we've got to guard better in order to have a chance. And David, what do you think about this team, not, not only going into the Big 12 tournament, but going into, you know, as a possible number one seed in the NCAA tournament? Especially coming from where they were at the beginning of this season, not being, I mean, a, a top 15 team at the best, getting those early season losses to Kentucky, Duke, Davidson. You know, you can't, you can't let that uh, get out of your mind easily either. Yeah, some upsetting losses, but this team looking for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, again, I don't think, me included, anyone saw them being this good of a team, number three, number four in the nation, depending on what ranking you look at. And especially with North Carolina shellacking Duke the other night as well, I think they're a lock for a number one seed. We'll have to see how they get through the Big 12 tournament. But again, you go back to Kansas and Mizzou, wouldn't that be a great matchup again to see those two teams uh, Matt, Matt, meet, meet up in the Big 12 tournament? You definitely wouldn't mind seeing them play in the Big 12 tournament. I think... Actually, it's split about half and half. I'm sure some key fans would yeah. never want to see the Missouri Tigers again, but that may be the case. But, yeah, David, you say three or four. Duke was three in the other poll, and they lost by 18 to North Carolina last night. So unless North Carolina jumps over KU, it's looking like he's going to be number three when both polls come out tomorrow. And a couple of other things that came out today. The Big 12, David, announced yeah. so, uh, their season-long conference award winners. And KU really reeled in some awards. It was Tyshawn Taylor. He achieved first team All Big 12 status, unanimous selections. The guys played a heck of a game. Those 17 points, that's for his season conference. He has 18.6 points a game. I feel like no one's played better or more consistently the entire time than Tyshawn has been able to play in the Big 12 conference. Yeah, you know, a great selection. A lot was made of his struggles earlier in the non conference schedule. A great selection, though, during Big 12 play again, was the leading scorer almost for most of this Big 12 season over Thomas Robinson throughout the conference schedule. So, yeah, great. A unanimous decision, obviously. And that, yeah, that was great. He's not the only one, though. Thomas Robinson was voted Big 12 player of the year. He averaged 18 points per game. He was the only player in the Big 12 to average a double double. And, you know, David, you had to see this one coming from a mile away. He's almost a national player of the year. How can he not win his own conference player of the year? Yeah, I, I believe he will be national player of the year. And he, he got this because of his rebounding prowess as well. Average to double-double all throughout the season. Again, a great selection, a no-brainer. Yeah, and moving on, Jeff Withy was named All-Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Third team All-Big 12 also, and of course to the All-Big 12 defensive team. 65 blocks is a Big 12 conference play record. And then Bill Self won the award for coach of the year. Him and Fred Hoiberg split that one. And so it was a big time for the Jayhawks in the awards. And now they're going to play in the Big 12 tournament. They'll be playing the winner of, I believe, Oklahoma and Texas A&M coming up this Thursday. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have Matt Gasper on to discuss women's basketball with us. Stay tuned. Take the 
to the drama. Only attracted the things that bring the trauma. Ma'am, you forgot your purse. Honesty, pass it on. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> And welcome back to Jayhawk Sports Talk. I'm Taylor Williamson and David Elliott. We'll be joined shortly by our women's basketball expert, Matt Gasper, to discuss this KU women's basketball team. But David, KU registering a huge win today. They were able to beat Oklahoma, who's in the top half of the Big 12, by a final score of 83-77. to Aisha Sutherland, her last regular season game, she's a senior, 23 points and nine rebounds. And OU, oh, Erin Ellenberg, she is a fantastic player. She had 27 points. Fortunately, it wasn't enough. Jayhawks moved to 8-10 and 10 in conference, 19-11 and 11 for the year, as Oklahoma drops to 19-11 for the year, and 11-7 and 7 in conference. David, how big is this win for the Jayhawks? Oh, it's huge, especially since, again, we go back to the injury of Carolyn Davis. This team on the rocks. I don't think anybody saw them maybe winning the rest of the you know, conference season. And now, especially going into the Big 12 tournament, they may have some momentum coming. And again, they might match up with some tough matchups in the tournament in Kansas City here coming up next week. But we'll have to see. They're, a, they're obviously a close to being tournament team. The NCAA tournament is just around, the, uh, just around the bend. And this team, we were thinking without Carolyn Davis, might only be an NIT team. Who knows? They might make the big dance. And David, I felt like this is the kind of team that without Carolyn Davis would struggle. And I thought that they needed to beat Oklahoma State. They lost a three-point game to Oklahoma State at Allen Fieldhouse on Aisha Sutherland's senior night earlier this week. And it was a game that I think that the Jayhawks really needed to win. They needed to get to that 20 victory plateau mark. And they needed to go nine and nine in conference. And they just weren't able to do that. And it was a tough loss for the Jayhawks. Aisha Sutherland played out of her mind. Unfortunately, Tiffany Bias did her one better. Tiffany mm -hmm. Bias with 26 points in that game. Aisha Sutherland only had 23, and that was the difference in that game. Uh, yeah, Tiffany Bias, a fantastic athlete. Aisha Sutherland managed to get 10 boards, and that's what's really going to, I feel, keep the Jayhawks from being able to make the tournament. If they aren't able to make it, the Big 12 tournament is starting up here soon, but the Jayhawks were, they finished tied for sixth with Texas and Oklahoma State. I mean, David, how bad did the Oklahoma State loss hurt? It's, it, that's a big loss, especially being on senior day as well for Aisha Sutherland. It is good to see Aisha pick up the scoring with the loss of Carolyn Davis, 23 for those last two contests. She's going to have to continue to do that. You know, she, she is, along with Angel Goodrich, really the only scoring weapons, I, in my mind, for this team. She's going to have to continue to step up and score at that clip if this team does want to make a run in the Big 12 tournament. We know someone who I saw actually today, Natalie Knight, had 18 points. That's a, one of the younger players. You don't usually see her contributing 18 points. That was huge for the Jayhawks victory. And hopefully she's able to continue to step up. And another person who's important is Chelsea Gardner. She's the person who will be, who's been replacing Carolyn Davis. She's only averaging you know, a tick under 10 points a game right now, I believe. And Carolyn Davis is averaging 17. So she's doing her best. Chelsea Garner, a young girl, so it'll be interesting to see how the Jayhawks are able to do there. And we are now joined by our Jayhawk women's basketball expert, Matt Gasper, to talk about the future of this team. So, Matt, where do we stand right now? Well, this was a huge win for the Jayhawks in more than one way. First off, this was the 100th all-time Big 12 conference win for KU. And going into, the, into today, the Jayhawks were either going to be the 6th seed in the, NC, or excuse me, in the Big 12 tournament or the 8th seed. With the win, they jumped up to the 6th seed. As you take a look at the bracket here, the most important thing for this team was to not be in the same side of the bracket as Baylor. Um, with the win, KU jumped all the way down to the bottom of the bracket there. They'll, play, they'll be playing Texas A&M on Thursday night. Had they lost, they'd be playing um, either Texas Tech or Texas. Um, with 
uh, Baylor upcoming. So basically what this did, it allowed KU to make a run in the tournament and really gave them that opportunity to make a push for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I feel like that is somewhere you wouldn't want to be. It's on the side with Baylor, Matt Baylor. Mm -hmm. Going 31 and 0, winning every single game. Brittany Griner, an absolute beast, and no team wants to play no. yeah. <laughs> Baylor in the Big 12 Conference tournament. They're going to have to play eventually, but the more they can put it off, the better, if you ask me. And you take a look. I mean, what? How did this team fare against A&M this season? Well, this season they have struggled against Texas A&M. KU's 0-2 this year. They really have had a hard time getting off to a good start. In both games, they've been down by double digits at halftime, and it, it's really made things very difficult for them to come back. Um, you can see the first game in Lawrence earlier this season. The Jayhawks only lost by 11. Angel Goodrich played very well. She had 28 points, but Texas A&M had 14 steals. They had a total of eight, or excuse me, KU turned the ball over 18 times for the game, and it really just set up for disaster from the beginning. Uh, and then down in College Station, KU really was never in this game. Aisha Sutherland put up 11, but Kelsey Bone was able to just dominate down low. Uh, she had 26 points and eight rebounds and just really helped Texas A&M secure it. So what KU needs to do in order to hang in there and to beat Texas A&M is they have to stay competitive early. Um, one of the big things they did well today was they hit clutch free throws. In their final two minutes of the game today against Oklahoma, KU was 10 for 10 from the line. So hopefully if they can continue doing that and continuing to shoot the three-point ball well, KU made eight today against the Sooners, they'll have a very good chance to beat A&M and move their way on. And yeah, A&M is a team that won the national title last year, so they, they are no slouches. But real quickly before we head out to break, let's talk tournament. Where do we think that this team stands in terms of the NCAA tournament? Well, going into this week, KU was on the, or they were listed as a bubble team, but they were, um, according to Bracketology, they were a 10 seed. The win today on the road helps this team tremendously. It gives them a lot of confidence um, playing, uh, being able to go and get a road win. And now you think if the team can somehow beat Texas A&M, the defending NCAA champion, uh, and possibly one more against what could be the Oklahoma team they just beat today, this could really be a team that could make a push for the NCAA tournament. And David, do you see this team as an NCAA tournament team? I, I barely. <laughs> you know, and I, I didn't think I would have said that just a couple weekends ago, but I think barely. But bigger question, if they do get in, what are they going to do in the tournament? Hey, let's get, get in first. first. I don't let's mean, in there. I don't mean to be we'll a pessimist, <laughs> but I'm, you know. Just All so. right. Well, we'll have more <laughs> answers for you next week. Matt, thanks for joining us. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll talk some baseball, softball, and just a little bit of track. Stay tuned. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone. But you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community. Get the resources you need and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. In 1990, in Severn, Maryland, the daughter of a clergyman was discovered by a music industry insider while pumping gas at a service station. The odds of her getting signed and spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts one in 19 million. The odds of this former church choir singer going on to sell 40 million records, one in 15 million. The odds of the same woman winning six Grammy Awards and starring in two Broadway plays, one in 75 million. The odds of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference.
and welcome back to Jayhawk Sports Talk. Taylor Williamson here with David Elliott and the KU baseball team was back in action. They headed down to San Antonio and David, there were not good results for the Kansas Jayhawks. First game against UTSA, they lost 7-4. to four. Chris Manship had a great game for the Jayhawks, 2-4 for four with 3 RBIs. Fortunately, KU waited until the ninth inning to get all of their offense, scoring three runs in the ninth, and Frank Duncan got tagged for four earned runs in six innings pitched for the loss. David, a tough loss for the Jayhawks to take. That one dropped them to five and three. Yeah, Manship uh, doing most of the work there on the offensive side for the Jayhawks. A guy that you can keep track of, and you can, usually you can uh, count on for scoring, run, hitting RBIs, doing a great job. But yeah, just um, not enough in that one. And as you'll talk about here, <laughs> Not enough for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, the next game they faced off against the University of Louisiana Lafayette. They lost this one by a tally of 8-6. to six. And you see that record getting slowly closer to 500. They're 5-4 and four now. Dakota Smith, a freshman, though, had a great game for the Jayhawks. Four RBIs, a homer, two for four. Kansas had a season-high 14 hits. Wasn't enough, though, as Wes Benjamin gave up five earned runs and only four and a third, so J Jayhawks would fall in that one as well. David, what, what happened with the Jayhawks there? A season high 14 hits, but if you're not getting the runs in, if you're not batting them in, you know, what, what does it matter? You are getting guys on base, um, that's good, but if you're not scoring in the runs, you know, you're going to tally up a lot more L's than W's on that final slate. So, yeah, again, a close, a close one, than, uh, closer than the last one, only a two-point uh, or, or two-run game, but the Jayhawks, again, Getting closer and closer, as you mentioned, to that 500. Well, yeah, unfortunately, close enough isn't good enough <laughs> for the Jayhawks. And, you know, they, they, they'd give us a little justification. They wouldn't get that close in the next game. Faced off against Gonzaga in the finale. They lost there 7-2. to Gonzaga 10-0. and I had no idea Gonzaga baseball was any good. I know about their basketball, but Gonzaga 10-0. and As we said, Kansas sits there at a 5-5. Five and five. Thomas Taylor... Five and two-thirds innings pitch, gave up five earned runs, three Ks. Kevin Koontz, three for four with an RBI. Kansas has now lost three straight. David, what, is, what, what went wrong? This team was looking very nice coming into this tournament, and they just go in and they get their butts kicked. Well, the bigger story is Thomas Taylor. He, this, he was going on 14 and a third innings without letting any runs uh, scored on him. So, again, a great pitcher for the Jayhawks. Gave up two runs the first two of his career, or of this season, um, for the Jayhawks. So, not a good game from Taylor. Kuntz, though, was able to uh, put in one of those runs. A good day for him on the offensive side. But again, yeah, the Gonzag, Gonzaga uh, Bulldogs, a great season, 10-0. and I, I think this is a good loss, if you can call it a good loss for the Jayhawks, going up against a very talented Zag, uh, Gonzaga team. And yeah, and you talk about this pitching that really just seemed to not show up this week. You got Thomas Taylor. He's got a 2.29 ERA so far this season. Wes Benjamin, 3.06. And you got Frank Duncan, who's sitting at 3.86. The Jayhawks, three stars. Those are not bad numbers. They had three bad games. Hopefully, this is just an off weekend for the Jayhawks and not a sign of things to come. But the, the hitting needs to pick up. Kevin Koontz leading this team, hitting 400. Zach Elgey hitting 300. And then you have no other players hitting, oh, no other regulars who are hitting over 300. So the offense is definitely going to have to pick up. Yeah, and LG, another guy that you can usually count on, but him and Koontz, that's not going to be enough uh, for the Jayhawks. They're going to have to get other guys, like we mentioned earlier, manship, get other guys hitting a little bit better of an average. And I think this is going to be a team that's going to try to win with their pitching, but yeah. is going yeah. to need a fair amount of hitting. Looking ahead for the Jayhawks, they have a little bit of a reprieve. One, they finally returned to Lawrence, and two, they're facing off against the 0-4 North Dakota Fighting Sioux. North Dakota has played four games so far this year, all against Wichita State. They lost the first game 1-7. They lost the second game 0-26. They lost the third game 1-15, and they lost the fourth game 1-16. I mean, David, these are, these are games that the Jayhawks, I think, <laughs> really need to capitalize on, right? Well, and especially coming back home, uh, the friendly confines of Hoagland Ballpark. Uh, it'll be good to get out to the ballpark again. Hopefully the temperatures are as nice as they were today. Um, I, I'm almost getting to 70 today, so unseasonably warm. But yeah, it'll be good to get back home 
and hopefully get back on the winning track and get that, uh, that record of back over 500. All right, David. And moving on to softball, a team that is having a considerable amount of success. Softball team traveled out to, I believe it was Wisconsin this weekend. They played against Connecticut, Wisconsin, and Charleston Southern. First game was against Connecticut. They won 8-0. to zero. Alicia Pyle, she's had a heck of a season so far, 7-2, and two, one hit away from perfect. Ashley Newman, she had herself three hits. Moving on, they faced off against Charleston Southern. Another big W, David, for the Jayhawks. They won 6-3 to three there. Ashley Newman, first four-hit game of her career. She's playing well so far. And in the final game of the series, they faced off against the Wisconsin Badgers, able to get a W there too, four to zero. Liz Cocoon recorded four RBIs. She broke the record for career RBIs. 15th win in a row, David. Yeah. Jayhawks are 15 and two. That's the longest win streak that the Hawks have ever had. Second longest, actually, since 1992. 1992, they won 17, 15 tied for number two. What has gotten into the softball team? You know, after starting 0-2, now they've won 15 straight, 15-2 and record. Yeah, a great start for the team. Again, non-conference schedule the last several seasons under Megan Smith, head coach. They've been able to win several of their games. Once they get to Big 12, kind of fall off the map. We'll have to see if they can keep this momentum going and, uh, and keep winning here in the non-conference schedule. Is We're not too far off from the Big 12 slate. Uh, th this tournament they actually played this last weekend down in Charleston, South Carolina. I wanted to quickly correct you on that, Taylor. Uh, but but uh, a couple of those games rained out, actually, um, so they could have had a chance to pick up a couple more wins um, if the thunderstorms wouldn't have played havoc. And you're right, Charleston, South Carolina. I don't know why the heck I thought anyone would be playing softball in early March <laughs> in Wisconsin or Connecticut. But yeah, David, this team, they're doing it right now with offense and pitching. Rosie Hole hitting 412, Ashley Newman 407, Maggie Hole 386, Elisa Moyer 381, and there's a bunch of other players who are still hitting over 300, and the three starting pitchers for the Jayhawks all keeping their ERA below three, uh, below three, David, and that's really what you need to see from the Jayhawks, and if they could keep that up, they're going to be able to win games, but as we said, it's a matter of what they are able to do in conference, and that was the kryptonite for the Jayhawks last year. Got off to that stellar start in non-conference, and it's really going to be a matter of them getting back into the conference season and be able to win some of those games, and that's what's been really tough. But now talking to about a team, David, whose season is quickly coming to a close, the women's indoor track team. They're heading to nationals in Boise. Auto qualifiers for this team, the women's 4x400, Dixon Washington Morse and Daniels Diamond Dixon, who we're going to talk about in a second. She has a heck of a 400 time, but they run a 331.36 of the Big 12 champions. They were, it was a meet record. School record for the team, too, so they're sure to put on a solid showing. Diamond Dixon, her 400-meter time, 52.55. That's a school record and a Big 12 champ. She won the Big 12 championship in that time. Andrea Gubel, she's doing the triple jump, David. School record, she leads the NCAA, 13.59 meters. And lastly, Elena Krejcik, the weight throw, 68.112 Feet, that's a school record. David, wow. what do you see for this team going into Boise, Idaho? I was going to say, some pretty good performances there. The indoor nationals coming up here, and I mean, who, who can't wait for the Kansas Relays coming up in, uh, in late April? So, yeah, some very, very good performers. You know, you hear a lot about Diamond Dixon, but as you just mentioned, a lot of other good performers for this team, and look for great things here yeah. heading into the spring. And we'll have that and more for you. Men's Selection Sunday, next Sunday, the NCAA indoor track meets will have finished up, and we'll know if the KU women's team is going to the playoffs. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Taylor Williamson with David Elliott. We'll see you here next week.